Hello, I'm Black Bright and I've been doing this channel for a little while now and I discuss various topics that I think are of interest and which I think will um, benefit um, a disadvantaged community. Now, um, today I always think that nothing happens before the time. Um, I never plan my videos. I tend to just um, have an inspiration and then it's like a voice in my head will talk to me and say, talk about this Black Bright and I'll research it and then I'll do a video on it. So I haven't been really feeling very inspired. I haven't, I've been feeling a bit under the weather, hence the glasses. So I wasn't really expecting to do a video today. But um, I was listening to Akala and he was at the Edinburgh Festival promoting his book, The Natives, and it's to do with culture and class. And his interviewer was asking him about apartheid. Now, before that, before she asked him about apartheid, he mentioned about the 1948 British Nationality Act, which gave all Commonwealth countries automatic British citizenship. And how in 1962, um, the British Nationality Act amended it to stop that from happening. And so um, when she mentioned about whether or not apartheid would ever come to the UK, Akala said, well, he not in an obvious way. And then he referred to Rab Butler. And this is what he didn't quote it verbatim. He was trying to um, do it based on his memory. But based on his memory, he said um, about Rab Butler, who was the Home Secretary at the time. Now, Rab Butler was referring to the 1962 British Nationality Act and said it has great merit. No, the great merit of the British Nationality Act 1962 was that it could be presented as a non-discriminatory, but its restrictive intent was intended to and will indeed apply to coloured people almost exclusively. And there was something about that, about the British Nationality Act 1962, that resonated with me with those words because what it told me indirectly was that the British Policy Act was to create apartheid in a discreet way. It wasn't going to be obvious but it was going to discriminate discreetly against colour people of colour in what they called coloured people in those days. And then I thought about how it is doing that. Okay, so from 19, the 1981 the Nationality Act stopped um, anybody from being a British citizen, whether or not they were born here. I guess that was the first step. Um, and then we had the, um, more recently we've had the hostile environment policy. And we all know that that goes out, that um, gives penalties to employers, to landlords, to its it it negotiates with the NHS. It sorry it negotiates with the banks, um, the Department of Works and Pensions, the Inland Revenue, the driving license um, people. Everybody is collaborated under that hostile environment policy to make foreign nationals' lives as difficult as possible. Foreign nationals. It is to um, weed out the illegal foreign nationals that are in the country, but foreign nationals, people of colour, all the same. How does it do that? With those who, uh, who can't be bothered, they may just go on the name of a person, which is discriminatory. The, the name of a person will normally indicate the colour of a person. Asian name, African name, Polish name, they're very easy to discern whether or not they are English people, white English, I should say. So then we have the immigration policies and their restrictive elements, making it difficult for people 
to um, get through the system now, whether legally or not. Um, I shouldn't say or not because they're normally legal, but they're very, very intricate and restrictive and rigid these days. So that you find that people who would have had an answer maximum in six months are sometimes waiting up to a year. And unless you've got like 50,000 to take your case to a judicial review, you don't have much chance in appealing against that. They have a list of reasons why um, your application may be delayed from um, incomplete information, whether the biometric card was um, delivered on time, you know, lots of lift, whether or not they have to call you in for an appointment. You know, there's so many things that they can apply to a reason for the delay. And you've got no proof otherwise. You know, they have to do external checks. We don't know how long those external checks are going to take. So all of these things can delay or defer or reject citizenship naturalization and they can all be discriminatory because every single one of those applicants are foreign nationals they're not born on the soil so that could be a discriminatory practice as well i'm not saying it is i'm saying it could be if we're looking at what rabs butler said about the 1962 british nationality act then what else do we have we have operation nexus Operation Nexus, which is also aimed at foreign nationals. You can tell a foreign national a mile off, whether they be people of colour or whether they be um, people from the EU. You can tell them a mile off. Um, it's just like racial profiling. You stop them, you um, connect with the Home Office or the Immigration Border Force and you ship them out. But all that is discriminatory because it's based on colour. Section 60, which Savi Javid brought out uh, more recently, um, that is not, that is disproportionately targeted at people of colour. And um, as a result, it's the people who are of colour who are discriminated against in this SUS law, in this Section 60, where they can stop and search and have no reason or no suspicion for doing it. And then... Um, I think that's mostly the most discriminatory practices I can think of at the moment, which create division, segregation, discrimination. And how I understand understand Rab, but what, what, what Rab Butler meant when he said, what did he say? But it's restrictive intent was intended to and will indeed apply to coloured people almost exclusively. In a nutshell, that's what that is all about. All of these policies and procedures, that is what it's about. It's about discrimination and segregation. The only thing I don't understand is why. Why do you need to discriminate why can't you just tell people that, OK, we allowed your forefathers or whoever they were into the country from 1958 to 1973? And those people were legal. We didn't really expect them to have offspring. We didn't expect them to stay. We didn't expect them to um, have generations of black British children or black Asian children or black whatever other nationality there are in the country. We didn't expect that. And we weren't prepared for that. So I'm ever so sorry, folks. We don't want you here. We don't want your kind here. We do not want your colour here. And therefore, what we're going to do to solve this is we're going to give 100 grand to each family and you can pee off. Find somewhere else to go and live. I'm sure a lot of people take that opportunity up. We don't have squatters rights in this country. We've been here long and we have certain rights, but, you know, as you know, there's always a disclaimer. The disclaimer is in the passport. A lot of us who are not born on the soil do not have a right to live in the country. So technically, they have no moral obligation. They want to be seen as being the nice guy. But 
by seeing by be, by trying to be seen as being the nice guy they're not telling us up front like the Americans tell their people or their immigrants they are doing it in a more um, vicious way it's a more unkind way because stopping and searching randomly and um, any black person you know that's not that's not very nice when you're discriminating against people you know by their names when they could be genuinely nice people that's not very nice that doesn't show the government up in a very nice light and I know that there's you know there's people who I, I think it's got to do with the the British culture the British culture tends to be one where they're very polite on the surface but they're bubbling underneath and whether it's a white British or a black British the black British aren't so bad because the black British tend to have the culture a merge of cultures of people in their generation or where they came from but the white British they have what they used to call the plastic smile they still have it well you don't see it so often now but that smile that is probably because we've cottoned on but that smile that says hi and really they hate your guts and they come and ask you to do things and you know they're asking you to do things because they feel they get the pleasure of being above you and having the ability to do that or having the authority to do that having the authority to refuse a bank account or a, of an offer of a room or any offer of benefits is there some kind of authority in that and power and control so is that what this is about power and control they don't want to tell us to leave because they want to stay here and make our lives hell they don't really want us to leave in other words um, I guess you know it's more beneficial for them to get rid of a certain number so they have less to control and it's easier when there's less maybe that's what it's about you know I have no idea but there is something in what's going on, on going on something in the amalgamation of all these policies something about trying to um, demean and diminish um, certain sectors of the community look how many black men they have in jails for non-violent crimes probably because they're going to get money for them you know what I mean maybe that's their motivation or is it about segregation is it a part of this apartheid this non-obvious this discrete apartheid structure putting them all in jail so they're separate from their families separate from um, the community and they're no longer a threat because they're all locked up it's no different it's just got a different um, dressing a different disguise it's no different from way back we're, we're made to feel as though we have an element of freedom but you often hear these little innuendos too much foreigners running um, government um, government jobs they're all coming over here they're taking over and so you know that there are people still here with that mentality of the 1400s they've still managed to um, reinforce that negative and biased mindset after all these years it's permeated their skin and the generations where where it should have kind of blended out and gone away with the, you know gone out with the wash it hasn't how has that managed to seep through so many generations that racism that bias that hatred that anger that frustration how has it managed to seep through all these generations who's been nurturing that anyway I think I've said enough I hope I'm feeling better soon and you have a wonderful day bye bye